Hello, uh, <clears throat> my name is Agna Bogdjunite and this is my colleague, Edunas Grinkavichus. We are straight from Kona's Artist House, uh, from where uh, we invited everyone this autumn to look back on the discourse of sexuality or sexualities in the 90s <clears throat> in relation to social, political and cultural changes in Lithuania and Eastern Europe. Uh, the project Obstein West uh, dot in honey uh, contains two parts. And uh, one part, uh, which is Obstein West uh, in Lithuanian has two meanings. And uh, it also means, West also means evenings, uh, first referring uh, like obscene, something sexual, something erotic, something dirty and immoral in terms of how today uh, feminism in Lithuania, for example, or gender roles or genderism is described from right-wing <clears throat> representatives. Uh, so uh, we wanted to expand and dive into the 90s uh, as a decade where um, a lot of discourses started around uh, sexuality and gender in art, art discourse as well, in artistic uh, context, especially uh, concerning the women artists. And uh, it's not a coincidence that in Honey, uh, the second part of the title also uh, means, <clears throat> uh, also refers to uh, Agnes Rakoskaitis, uh, the artist uh, performance uh, with the same name, uh, which was made in 1996 and <clears throat> Uh, so basically, the whole uh, the whole project, which which contains uh, a lot of parts, including also reading uh, sessions and video art screening and this discussion, also uh, it also it kind of analyzes or tries to analyze the the issues of gender roles and sexuality in the this changing decade, but. It also, the project seeks to uh, kind of problematize the contemporary uh, uh, discourse as we are vet witnessing um, a kind of a backlash in terms of uh, women's, migrants, and LGBTQ rights. Uh, so uh, the gender check project uh, for me personally is also a part of this uh, a past and a present as well, uh, where we still, and it's still kind of an exceptional uh, project in its scope and in uh, and concerning the subject itself. And it's until now, it's a very important, I think uh, for me as well as the curator, uh, as a source uh, for, many creators, I think, and are historians. And I know that my colleague, for example, in, in Berlin, when I ask and we discuss something, uh, we always look uh, and check the website of Gender Check uh, for some references and, and uh, artists uh, as well, and uh, curators and researchers. So <clears throat> from my side, the the um, kind of the main question uh, would be for uh, for the for the participants of discussion uh, would be uh, I would be very curious to hear what do you think uh, if um, this kind of project and this kind of uh, subject uh, on this kind of subject would be possible uh, today in in one of the Eastern European countries, not in uh, not in Austria, but uh, somewhere in Hungary, <laughs> uh, for example. Um, 
yes. Uh, so I'm finishing with this question and I want to give my word to Edvinas, my colleague, and then I'm very excited about this discussion as well. Well, hello everybody. Um, Edvinas Grinkavichus, as my dear colleague Agne presented me, we both work here in Kona's artist house. And uh, today we really have a very nice chance to revisit, I think, one of the, uh, the most uh, significant exhibitions which happened in the, um, um, Europe, presenting the Eastern European uh, artists, and especially female and queer artists, um, back in a day, and it feels like it's already um, so many years past, and we still find all those topics relevant and even maybe more relevant than uh, back in that day, because we learned a lot about uh, how to talk about them, the theories, the, the, how to raise the questions, how to be critical. But um, I would doubt if the scene we have here in our region uh, at this very moment, uh, the same brave as it used to be uh, back in those times. I think that's also how and why we so interested in that decade, which uh, just shamed, shaped around this period of uh, uh, independence. And uh, it was really interesting to explore and research it more. And uh, now um, I'm really happy to present uh, the participants of uh, our discussion. Uh, it's really a great opportunity to have you all here. Uh, so we have uh, Boyana Page, uh, the main creator of a uh, gender check exhibition. Uh, we have uh, Katrin Kivima, uh, the researcher and creator uh, from Estonia, who was also taking part in the uh, gender check exhibition. And the moderator of the discussion is uh, creator, artist, and writer uh, Laima Krivita, who's going to be moderating the discussion. Uh, so we're going to give the floor to you. And I also just uh, quickly want to share thank you for the partners, uh, regional art and feminism organizations uh, from the region, like uh, Latvian Contemporary Center, Echo Ganrong, and Feministerium, uh, who agreed to join us and to share the stream with us so wider audiences uh, could see this discussion. And we wish you a great evening and um, a nice a nice uh, conversation. Hello, good evening. Uh, it is my pleasure to participate in this discussion and I'm very grateful to Agne and Edvinas and Kona's Artist House that they did this uh, gender check family reunion, not all of 25 participants, but still a little part of it. Uh, it's always, uh, it always felt uh, more than just a research team. It always felt like some kind of um, discursive uh, and also, yeah, almost familiar network uh, of people who were interested in feminist and queer issues. And for that, of course, we should thank uh, the chief curator, Boyana Page, who envisioned uh, her exhibition not simply as, uh, as some kind of a collection of uh, artworks from the region, but also as a broader network which would work uh, long after the exhibition is over. So um, I think uh, Gender Check in itself was an example of feminist creating in the sense that it was horizontal in, in organizational approach, like Boyana was very... Um, um, very attentive to all the researchers. There was not a hierarchical relationship. There was really a discussion of equal professionals. Then this idea of making networks and really working and sharing and inspiring each other, it was also a very important thing. But before we go into describing what was gender check, of course, uh, the most important thing is to hear from Boyana herself, who, as we know, is this uh, very acclaimed uh, international curator uh, who actually 
uh, as today she confessed is a modernist, uh, uh, and I would say she is a modernist in the most positive sense that she believes in big projects, and I'm really thankful that uh, she has this belief because, first of all, uh, Boyana created an exhibition after the wall, 10 years after the Berlin Wall, with, which was a milestone of understanding of that decade. And then the next project of that scale was gender check, which, which again became a sort of um, metaphor of the whole decade uh, of, of uh, what's happening in this region, East and Central uh, Europe. So Boyana, mm, gender check is important and amazing and um, could you please uh, tell us uh, how it happened that you decided to look at the, the changes in that East Central Europe through the lens of gender? Why you chose? There was a competition of seven um, curators, and you won. It, and it, it means you, you've proven that gender is a very important aspect. Thank you for the introduction, Laima. It is really like a family uh, reunion with not all family members, but we think of all of them. Uh, you know, I'm a freelance and I'm a foreigner living in Germany. And since all this project dealing with Eastern Europe are all done in English, with all of us communicating in English, it was important First of all, I got the invitation to propose a concept for something happening 20 years after the fall. They call it the fall of Iron Curtain. And then uh, I will mention more in detail when I start my presentation. But for me, it was important to, let's say, to try to reinvent the feeling of the times when, when we were doing, uh, preparing after the wall in Stockholm. You know, there was so much solidarity among us, colleagues, curators, artists. Then I, I was thinking maybe could, could we do it in, uh, could we do it uh, again with a different platform? And this platform was gender, in fact. So, uh, Boyana, uh, you mentioned that uh, you chose the, this um, gender lens uh, from many points of view. One of them was political, that uh, actually nobody was speaking uh, about this uh, art uh, of Soviet period from gender check in, in broader sense. It was uh, all about different things. Uh, one of them, like nationalist uh, emancipation, like national emancipation, and other thing also, like being uh, some kind of periphery of Europe. But uh, gender was always considered um, irrelevant. It's similar to nowadays, maybe, that uh, gender is uh, still something uh, we shouldn't talk because uh, uh, very often... Um, uh, especially those patriarchal uh, authorities, they say, oh, oh, but everything is achieved, we are very equal and, and happy. And and still you you did, you decided that uh, it's worth looking at it. And also what was important, you decided not only to make an exhibition, but also to make a series of um, conferences and produce an, um, a reader which is equally important, not only the catalog of the exhibition, but the reader, you collected the text of, uh, of regional art historians so that we could have our own voice and not only to read about our arts from uh, some Western scholars. So um, could you please um, tell more about how you decided on the structure of, of exhibition, how you decided that you need to invite all those researchers and that you need to have conferences and a reader? Uh, you, you know what? When we did After the Wall for Stockholm, then uh, the focus on this exhibition was the 90s. David Elliott, who was director of Moderna Musette uh, at that time in Stockholm, uh, has, a, a, let's say, 
positive past, if I can uh, tell it this way. During the Cold War, he was interested in Soviet avant-garde, which was not exhibited in, in the West until late 80s. And he was curious what happened after the war in these countries among younger artists. So we traveled at that time to, uh, let's say, I think 17 countries, uh, David and, and Iris, uh, three of us, because we dealt with the, let's say, living art. Gender Check is another project. And uh, I could do it because uh, until 2007, when we started Gender Check research, there is so much theoretical uh, uh, theoretical contributions from art historians, curators living in, in post-socialist Europe. So my, my idea was, let's see how we can read the art in Eastern Europe, produced in Eastern Europe, let's say, after the 60s until the beginning of the exhibition. And also, what is the discourse, theoretical discourse that develop meantime? Not the theoretical discourse is, is a little bit a tricky term because when I say theoretical uh, discourse, I mean uh, we could follow texts that are written in English, you know. So this was, uh, this was the disadvantage and advantage. So for, for gender check, because of this textual part, let's say, let's call it that way, it was important to talk to colleagues, you know, because I don't read it, uh, Lithuanian, either uh, either Estonian. So it was necessary to have a people, I, I call this, uh, David or always asking, embedded art, art historian to research what, I, I don't know, I don't have any better words, to research national histories in order to make a pat, patchwork in the gender track exhibition. Uh, so, uh, so Boyana, maybe we should uh, talk now together with uh, the images, so the people would also see some examples from the exhibitions, and you would comment on the important things and works and authors which you found crucial for gender check exhibition. And, and later, we will ask Katrin Kivema also to, to join with her uh, presentation. Please. Oh. I was informed I got, I can talk for half an hour when I, when I over, when I pass 30 minutes, you stop me. Okay? Yes. Can, can you see the presentation or not yet? Yes, we can, but please enlarge it. Uh, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry, okay. It, it's now okay? Yes. Yes, Okay. Please. So, since I was curious about the title, I had to do... I have to consult my memories, and this is Egle Rakauskaite performance in Honey, which I only could follow as, as a documentation. But we will meet Egle many times uh, later. Good. Then to check femininity and masculinity in the art of Eastern Europe. It was initiated and funded by Erste Foundation in Vienna. Exhibition was held in Vienna and also in, in Zaheta Gallery in, in Warsaw, which was very important because when we opened in Moscow, many artists and also colleagues from Poland were so grateful because they, after, after, the, the, after the war, so to say, there were many exhibitions of Western art in Eastern Europe, but they were happy to see some Eastern art productions in, in, uh, in Warsaw. Good. Uh, Piotr Piotrowski, my dearest friend, who unfortunately died uh, six years ago. And I'm certainly 
I'm almost sure that you know this Piotr Piotrowski thesis about horizontal history of European avant-garde, uh, where he writes, I will not read uh, entire quote because uh, you, you see it in the end, <coughs> the, the, the source of this quote, but it is important that horizontal uh, art, his art history, as he calls it, it's not to negate any Western views on Eastern art or art in general, but let's say an alternative, an alternative concept to uh, to modern and, and contemporary art. Okay, after the ball, Piotr was also important to me when when David Elliot invited me to curate after the ball because we had uh, endless discussions about about so. Uh, after the ball was had in Stockholm, Budapest, and Berlin, I was ship curator. Uh, David Elliott uh, was director of Moderna Mosette, and Iris Miller Westerman, who was curator of Moderna Mosette. The research for this was easier because at that time, Soros centers of contemporary art existed in 20 East European cities, and our starting point when we visited all these countries were to consult the documentation of Soros Center. They had mainly good documentation, but also other other sources we had like during discussions with artists and younger curators. So it was after the ball had two volumes catalog and as gender track, I called it East Centric, East Centric uh, edition. Uh, we had uh, 20 essays uh, commissioned from East European art historians. There is uh, some anthological text uh, uh, in the in the catalog. And as I say, gender check was about the 90s. And in this gender check exhibition, there were four four chapters, and I insist that uh, these chapters were not preconceived concept. We went to a country and asked for artists reinventing the past. All this, like in Treasure Check, came from the material we 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 get we, we, we had access to. And in gender, in the last chapter of the exhibition was this what I called genderscapes, where we also show Engle work in 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 fact a, a beautiful performance, but Engle will visit us also later. Good. Uh, Piotr Piotrowski book in the shadow of Yalta, Art and Avant-Garde in Eastern Europe, published, uh, was published 2009. And commenting on after the wall exhibition, he he, com he issues this comment. The year, the year 1999 was the last moment when it was possible to realize such a project. Soon thereafter, the post-communist world would disappear from the map from the map of Europe as a historical determined territory. And then the question will we be able in the future to find similarities between the former East Germany and Armenia, Slovenia, Poland, and Belarus? So let's imagine now that gender check was this near future. Uh, my love for, from Piotr, who, as I said, deceased, is limitless. But in this book, he didn't deal with the Baltic countries because until 89, Baltic countries were part of the Soviet Union. So this was my, my uh, let's say, a little bit remark about, about this book. Okay. Uh, now, gender check research started in 2007, as Lima, as, uh, Lima mentioned, and my proposal was ba based on these facts. At that time, in the 90s, there were many uh, uh, books, volumes dealing with gender in post-communist, blah, blah, blah. But most of these books, particularly this gender politics and post-communism, was based on this very arrogant theoretical approach in the 90s, our Western theory against, or we wrap 
examples from your Eastern European countries in our theory. So this was this was something that I was very critical about. And then there was this book, uh, Scattered Hegemonies, which was uh, for me, when I was thinking about uh, gender check, I had this title in mind. And I remember that I discussed it with, with, with Kati during the preparations. Then the Czech originally should have been called scattered resistances, but we, we got a better, better title, I think. So in 2001, Feminist Art, Hist Art uh, Theory, uh, edited by Hilary Robinson. There is no Eastern artist in this book or any practice in Eastern Europe, but in the latest edition, she included one text from the by uh, Pachmanova from Gender Check Catalog. Then there is this trend situated knowledges in Eastern Europe after 89. Gender was discussed by sociologists, anthropologists who don't discuss art, but even some, let's say, mainstream publication uh, written about uh, Eastern art in Eastern Europe. Not that they are not based on feminist methodology, but they are even Eastern European authors who contributed to Ariavet's book don't even mention women artists. So in that period, there were a couple of, 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 of uh, also in, in included, you know, there is Branko Dimitrievich, a colleague from mine from Belgrade, he said, you know, uh, also peeling potatoes is about Russian women artists only. Katy wrote also, Katy Kivima wrote a very good uh, review of, of this book, which is published in the Reader. Then in 2007, there was this huge exhibition in, uh, in, uh, in St. Petersburg, and they called it Sexing Up October Revolution. They digged about 200 nudes made, made produced by male artists, in order to celebrate October Revolution. In 2007, okay, important exhibition, mainstream, WEC, Art and Feminist Revolution. There were three uh, female, uh, in, in WEC, three women artists in Global Feminism, seven artists. So what was my capital when I proposed the project to Erste? That besides sociologists and and uh, and theory written by sociologists. There were many smaller projects in many Eastern European countries based on feminist methodology. So at that time, the journal and Paradoxa, the feminist art journal edited by Katie Dippel was important. Then uh, a journal Trecha. And in Trecha, I, in fact, I met Katie and Laima because this is there in Zagreb publication when I read translation of their text. And there are some also profil very important in Bratislava. Good. Feminist positioning in Eastern Europe as in 2007 and 8. Theory, question of interpretation, attempt to de-universalize de art theory and history, focus on the politics of location, the construction of national art histories, critique of both communist and post-communist patriarchy. Okay, uh, where to start? Gender checks, in my mind, started with this painting. This is a Polish uh, painter, uh, Wojtyslaw Fangor, Postazzi figures from 1950. It's a hardcore socialist realist painting. I don't have time to analyze it. But what we see here, are two types of, let's say, let's call it socialist femininity. It's the working couple building socialism after Second World War. It was not only building socialism, it was building, reconstructing Europe devastated after the Second World War. And the female worker could be called, what we recognize in her is so-called productive femininity, but she is not a peasant, but a urban person. And next to her, we have non-productive femininity or femme fatale. I like to call her Conrades fatale. And besides these two models of femininity, there is third one. 
uh, and this is femininity in socialist Europe, it's not only motherhood, it's about working mother. Researchers, when we send the letters to all these colleagues, artists, uh, cura uh, curators, or even sociologists, and so on, it was not necessary to define gender. So my idea was to check how we all understand gender. And I was also surprised, but not so much surprised, that from most of researchers, I got only women artists. And gender has also to do with masculinity, you know, and what kind of masculinity we are talking about. Interviews with all these uh, uh, colleagues who contributed to gender check researchers, uh, there are interviews with all of them in, in the gender check catalog. So this was, uh, a, this was a plan of the exhibition, very good architect from Vienna, Nicole Six and Paul Petrish did this. And I like this, uh, their proposal because it possesses fluidity, you know. And you know, all of you who curated exhibition in your life, we tell a story in space when we curate exhibition. You know, so we construct a story and we try to guide you through, through the exhibition. Okay. Lana said research in 20, uh, 24 post communist countries. There are publications. There were also symposia with Griselda Pollock and Edith Andras. Poor Griselda, she was really frustrated because she doesn't know enough about Eastern European art, but it, it was a good discussion. We, we did it. So, poster. A person designer in the museum wanted to have a couple on the poster. And I said, no, this is not Muhina time. And I have chosen this Vladislav Mamishan Monroe who impersonated Marilyn Monroe for several years. He was going around, around St. Petersburg uh, dressed, cross-dressed as, as Marilyn Monroe. This was a, a catalog in in, in Warsaw. Okay, this is the final catalog of gender check and very important for all of you who are interested. Gender check is important because of the text which are in it, essays, uh, uh, exhibition reviews and so on. But for me it's the most important because we have a bibliography of every possible text published in all possible countries that, that were published until 2010. Okay. Again, the structure of the exhibition is also not preconceived. I didn't, I didn't have fixed ideas. I want to tell this. The structure came really from the research, some title even from, from the articles by colleagues. So there, there are three parts. Part one, socialist iconosphere. There are like also four chapters. This was how it was installed on the first floor, and then uh, this was like, a, for me, it was like an icon of the exhibition, this uh, paint, uh, social realist project of 1950. This is probably the oldest work in the exhibition. 95% are all made, produced after 60s. Good. So, uh, there, is, uh, th there is a number of painting showing representing women at work, women doing traditionally masculine jobs, like building houses. But there are also some beautiful painting. You know, where women usually work if they work in, in industry? They work in textile industries, you know? And also, okay, steelmakers from, from, uh, from Moldova. And this is fantastic painting. A woman is always a woman made, made by Zaretsky in Ukraine. And this is what they called harsh style. So iconography is politically correct, but the execution, the style of the painting, it's let's, let's call it, let's modernist or povist approach, really. Okay, some more masculine drops. And there is a series of painting women doing traditional jobs. They always traditional labor, like cleaning the fish, uh, making bread. And now the second part here, emanci heroines of work, emancipation and discontent. This was 
something that I wanted to have for the exhibition, but I didn't get it. This is the fetishization of the woman's labor. It is the the, the uh, say, It is the the dress of a female worker who was a heroine of work. So this is labor and discontent. You know, also did the uh, painting portrait after work. You know, this doctor is completely exhausted. And one of my favorite painting, Muti Mama comes home, which is in fact, modernist painting, you know, also behind the mama, you see an abstract landscape. The family, a uh, huge painting by, uh, I don't have to elaborate on, on uh, relation to family. Family. The, this was the shocking painting by a Gidea painter about domestic violence. You know, domestic violence was a topic in socialist countries belonging to a private sphere, you know, state or police didn't intervene. And this is a statement, you know, look how huge it is. I was really shocked when Angelika Richter found, found this, this painting. Then some paintings also about motherhood. This is from Lima, beautiful sculpture. God. Then Madonna of Tallinn. Then anti-baby pills. There was a, a little discussion about why this anti baby Baby pills are in the exhibition, but I can tell it during the discussion. Private realities, personal resistance is Sanya Ivekovic work triangle. You probably know about that. Then incredible painting for Saltin is a woman, a vomiting woman. There is a big discussion in Lithuanian literature concerning this painting. I read, I think, after the after the exhibition. Then so, uh, Boris Mikhailov from Ukraine, photographic women in uh, photographic women in Ukraine, and this beautiful series by Anna Dauchikova, Moscow Women Sundays. Anna spent some time in in uh, in in Moscow and photographed women going to shop on Sundays, you know. And this work was never exhibited before gender check. And the colleague from Slovakia just sent it at the footnote. And Anna was so pleased because after this exhibition, this series was bought, bought and now belongs to the history of, of Slovakian photography. Remaking the past, it is incredible work by uh, GDR artist Cornelia Schleime. Uh, after Stasi archive became accessible to normal citizens, she looked at her uh, Stasi file and tried to disco to disc to remember after their report what she was really doing at the date when this when this report was made. Okay, Sanya Ivekovic, uh, Jean XX, Andri Sala discussion between mother and and son about socialist past. Maya Bajevic, also one of the series of work from Bosnia dealing with, uh, dealing with the socialism uh, war in Bosnia and so on. So just briefly summing up the period of state socialism. State socialism, feminism, an impossible relationship. Feminism was considered to be an import from the capitalist West. The women's woman's question was considered solved due to gender egalitarianism in the public sphere. By this, I mean access to education, to work, payment at work, etc. But what about the private sphere? In the institution where I worked 20 years, student cultural sector in Belgrade, my colleagues, uh, Radana Papic, my best friend who died in 2002, organized this conference, Comrade Woman, Woman's Question, a new approach. And after this conference, which, which was very uh, international conference, West, West and Eastern European and Yugoslav feminists took part, mainly sociologists. After the conference was completed and attacked by official communist uh, women organization in Yugoslavia, then that came a slogan, proletarian of all countries, who washes your socks. This is the title I borrowed for for my essay in the gender check. The issue was a private, so-called private sphere. Part two, negotiating individual positions, 60s, the latest, 
this was a plan. Woman in representation, old stereotypes versus latent feminism. Beautiful work, Scott. And what was I was really surprised that, that so many from many, many countries, at least seven countries, we got the work of women artists painting or sculpting female nudes, you know. Traditionally, in art history, you have male artists who, who dealt with. And uh, Zora Rusinova, who wrote about Jana Zelipska, used this term, a latent feminism. Okay, more. I don't, I cannot, don't have time, but these are all female nudes in the exhibition. Politics of self-representation. I love this Liliana Ruseva. She was married to an artist, self-portrait. You know, artists who represented her sitting in her kitchen. So, peeling potatoes, perhaps. Okay, Violeta Babulite. A new self-portrait, self-representation, ongoing series in the 90s. Then more self-portraits, self-representations. Romanian artist Jeta Bratescu. Uh, Lasta Derimar also Koleshnik used the term intuitive feminism for, for her and this is the work that I couldn't get for the show and this is uh, this was team very in the 90s you know ill body sick, bo sick body like by Katarina Kojira was not an issue you know in, in art but we see a self portrait of a GDR for photographer who had to be operated because of breast cancer. So, heroic male subjectivity reconstructed, fantastic painting by a Bosnian artist, self-portrait we remembers medal. I, I cannot elaborate more on this. Then also, uh, Jan Grigorescu delivery, where the artist simulated the delivery of a baby. Then some let's say, early homosexual works. This is uh, an example from, from Croatia. And this art is never exhibited during his lifetime. There is also very good artists who also died. Tomislav Gotovac, he did first happening in, in socialist Yugoslavia, uh, reading a female journal L. Then a section about couples, relationships, loves, Artist and her model, again, nice example from the 50s from Poland. And then Hempel, one of Ria G, uh, GDR artists who dealt with lesbianism. Then artists and models. This is a girlfriend of Rasha Todosievich. It, it's a video performance. Then uh, another, uh, another example of homosexual love. The male nude, I don't, I cannot elaborate on male nude now, unfortunately. And the last part was post-communist genderscapes. So I have stolen a title, Capital in Gender, from Susan Amilevska from Macedonia, who did an exhibition in Skopje in Macedonia in 2001. What is feminism? Something like summing up the post-socialist state, women artists. Refusal of feminism as a collective ideology, we had enough ideology in state socialism, this was one of the argument, and the other thesis also supported of one of our researchers that talking about feminism and artist intention or reading their feminist is putting women, back, women artists back to the ghetto. And one of my favorite sentences is from from Umelet, it's the art journal from, from Bratislava. One, let's say, I presume it's artist. I use that word feminism only intimately and when it is dark. I loved it. So this is now the last part, capital and gender. Unfortunately, I couldn't get this. In 2009, for 50th anniversary of the Barbie, they produce a Barbie as Angela Merkel. You know, so I couldn't get this, this doll, but it is in 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 Barbie M Museum in uh, uh, in America someplace. Okay, 
The changes are Muhina 1937 in a cartoon from his Westia female uh, Komsomol women is doing now what you can see what she is doing. Then Mare Trala, this is how we gave birth to Estonian feminism. It was the favorite piece in Warsaw. The guards were just standing in front of it and coming very often inside. And then, okay, some sarcastic attitudes to, to, to uh, pornography by Aneta Monachis and Lucia Trajkova, the darlings. And Eva Filova, oh God, without difference. So this is this Madonnas and, uh, and porno stars, uh, Hungarian artist, Tanya Ostovic searching for a husband with new passport. You probably know about this work. I don't have commented. And I like this work so much because, you know, exhibition was very rich and very heavy. So this work, I think this video by by Nomeda and uh, Gadiminas Urbonas made it some lightness. They engaged uh, bank clerks to uh, to sing ABBA song Money, Money, Money. So this, this was like a little bit easing. And again, this is also by uh, Chiza and Trachkova. Labor become, became form, becomes form. They worked with the unemployed women in uh, Prague and asked them to produce these patterns. And these patterns is unemployment in, uh, in Czech Republic uh, in, the, in the early 90s. Okay, also trafficking of women, uh, Slovenian artist, his main work is, is about, uh, it's called Code Red, about trafficking and prostitution. Politicization of the private, a la uh, Georgieva, uh, Bulgarian artist, a la sec Secret. So this, and to also, I may allow myself a little bit irony in this. Then again, Femina, how to represent female subject, identity, spe spectacle, and masquerades. This is Katarzyna Kozira. And this is this moment in the 90s when sick body also because partly also because of the AIDS, became a topic in art. And in the Nazis, you don't see sick bodies in art. Slovakia, Ilona Nemet, polyfunctional woman, beautiful work. When you sit on this couch or sofa, from these halls, you can see different voices of women, either unhappy, happy, crying at the moment when they reach orgasm and so on. It, it is absolutely beautiful work. And okay, from Armenia, chastity belts, what is now he domestication on women, a super mother, also a Polish artist, Elvieta Jablonska, convention and transgression, uh, convention, transgression about heterosexual and uh, homosexual, lesbian, and all other identities. I don't like the term gender role. I think I'm more close to, to Judith Butler about sexual identities. Okay, this was on the poster, and this is darling Vladislav at the opening of the mission. He, he droned. He was on Bali on holiday, and he drove, droned in ocean. Veronica Gromela, Girls too. so you see what you see. This is Anna Dautikova, upbringing by touch, also wonderful work. Lima will tell you later about this work. And this was one, for me, touching work from, from Belarus, you know. It's about lesbian couples uh, in Belarus, and it also has a beautiful table, title, He Has a Female Name. You know, there were like, I think, about 10 photographs made by this photographer. Okay, it's a story, I have to stop here, about homophobia in Croatia and in, 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 uh, in, in Serbia in the 90s. And this is very, I think I'm close to the end. This is very touching work. We show it as, as a slideshow on video. Temporary living space. Irina Abiyat. 
that's it, from Georgia. Photograph cells, prison cells of women who, who serve sentence in the prison, how they organize, how they organize their temporary living space, adding this. Uh, what they surround themselves in order to, to survive this uh, sent prison sentence. Okay, I think this, this is close to the end. Nationalism and feminist critique, Macedonian artist, Macedonian social plastic, this, the term is from Josef Boy's social plastic, the most famous person in the 90s in Macedonian were, were uh, president of the republic in the middle is a drug dealer and then the patriarch of, uh, of, of the Orthodox Church. This is social plastic. And again, a little bit about nationalism. nationalism. These are the flags produced by Bosnia, a Bosnian artist Gordana Angelic. And it is a video by her called Mantra. She, she walks on the road carrying all these flags that, you, that used to be used in a certain period of Bosnian history throughout centuries. So this is this mantra. And finally, this uh, Zucht group, uh, Victoria Zucht, uh, uh, Zucht from Dansk, who organized the presidential campaign in Poland in 2001 during the presidential election, using this woman, which is the cyborg, as a presidential candidate. So this is all virtually. And now this is one word before last. I've seen this Egle Rakowskaite performance in a book, and I... I wanted to be close to it in a way, so we invite, we invited. It was uh, it was uh, it was held first in Vilnius ninety five, as far as I am correct, and then at the close at the opening of Gender Check, she agreed to do a reenactment in two thousand nine, and I'm sorry. Uh, a photographer who is, by the way, my best friend, Goran Kamar Matic, photographed this performance, which was absolutely beautiful. Look how they look. So this is the end. And now, question for us curators, probably not for artists. The, uh, this is the probably the most sensible text in the catalog Global Feminism, written by Joan Key. What is feminist about contemporary Asian women artists? And then Joan Key uh, writes this. The question is not whether artists from Asian countries identify themselves, themselves as feminist or <laughs> whether their work impart feminist messages. Instead, the issue concerns the logic of interpretation. Okay. Shall we discuss this statement? Because all three of us here are digging into interpretation, but do we have a right to negate so-called intention of the artist who does work we recognize that feminist, but she doesn't claim that she is a feminist. That's all for me. <laughs> Thank you, Boyana, so much. Uh, I'm really happy that you showed uh, so many slides. Uh, I know that nowadays it's uh, quite popular to have art history without pictures, but um, I guess we we need those pictures uh, to to not just imagine. Of course, there are beautiful catalog. There is a beautiful catalog and and reader, but. Uh, for the discussion on for the people who are just uh, now seeing this um, information, this um, talk, uh, it's important to to see the real artworks. And uh, as for the question you posed, I guess, um, uh, Boyana, uh, maybe you can stop sharing now. Are you or or you did? Uh -huh. I'm stop. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Uh, sorry. So uh, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, so, uh, it's a very interesting question which you pose, and before we ask Katrin uh, to, to 
tell her story of gender check and of how it impacted her, uh, I would really like to ask what she thinks about uh, that question because um, uh, I think it's constant uh, dilemma in post-socialist world, uh, especially maybe not nowadays. Nowadays, perhaps we are further from that, but in the 90s, it was typical answer. I'm not a feminist. I'm just like uh, doing work which looks like feminist, which has feminist topics, which uh, uh, uses uh, feminist iconography and materials and so on, and even refers to certain theories. But still the artist uh, is only pronouncing, as Boyana said, uh, this uh, feminist word in the dark and when it's like very intimate circumstances. So, Katrin, how do you see this? Is it possible to interpret the uh, works of artists uh, from feminist perspective, even though artists themselves claiming not being feminist? Thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, so, well, it's a very good question. And, well, to be true to our own history, I think, uh, Boyana, you, Laima, yourself, and myself, I think we all have done it up to a point. Because, well, there is also, I mean, Boyana, it's, it's a very important question, and Boyana, you, you, you mentioned, should we overlook or discard the artist's intention? But us as art historians, we are also well... Um, informed about such fallacy as intentional fallacy, which is precisely presuming that the only meaning of the work of art relates directly or sort of emanates from the artist's intention, which of course is a very limited understanding of the work of art. That doesn't apply just for feminist work of art. So in that sense, what I personally always try to do, I try to acknowledge the artist's identity position as, let's say, at the time, identifying as not being feminist or not being activist. However, what, what in an interpretation we can do is to point out how the artwork functions. What is its function to the audiences in the culture, in the museum context, so on and so forth? And these things, you know, the artist's intention, and of course you can go even further, you can ask, well, does the artist actually know their subconscious intentions? But let's leave that tricky question aside. But of course, I think we should recognize it, but you know, the, the, the work lives on. The work sort of is is also not just the the sort of um, it 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 doesn't it it wasn't created in a vacuum. It's it's a shared language first of all. I mean, the artist uses images or the words which are shared, and therefore they have a common meaning and semantics, not just sort of personal you know, personally intended meaning, but also they are received by the large audiences. They, they, they have different meanings in different times. They are understood very differently. And I just wanted to actually in this, uh, to finish my long, long uh, answer to that uh, very pertinent questions, I actually wanted to remind us, um, Boyana, you showed this wonderful signature image of uh, gender check exhibition, which was on the poster by Russian artist Vladislav Mamushev Monroe. And I re recall that during the opening press conference, a lot of Viennese journalists, they didn't understand that it was an image of drag. They couldn't read it. They were asking the questions, why have you chosen this stereotypical image of femininity, which was so brilliant, I thought. It was so brilliant because it actually showed that gender is a performance, but people don't recognize it as such. And I thought it was so pertinent to actually what, what you, Boyan, tried to do with the whole exhibition. 
Uh, Boyana, would you like to answer uh, or, or to say a few words about what Katri said uh, or maybe about uh, why you decided to put, is this exactly because of the gender as performance as Judy Butler uh, writes or were there other reasons as well? Uh. First of all, I met Monroe when we were uh, researching uh, for After the Wall, because we went to St. Petersburg. And then at that time, he was going around as, as Marilyn Monroe. Uh, what I didn't like to have on a poster is heteronormative image, because there are many other identities that artists or other people can use and you know it's it's uh, this photograph just sticks on you you know it is it is how can I say am I allowed to say it's a sexy image you know and there are many layers behind it so there is this double meaning who is this person you know is she performing or is, is she or he he real no, he was he was such a darling, warm artist. I liked him. And the other thing is concerning, you know, I was really angry concerning uh, VEC because when I was when we were talking about the intention of the artists, you know, VEC, Art and Feminist Revolution in LA. Included in this feminist revolution, Marina Abramovic, who all her life refused any connection with feminism, and also Abakanovic, you know. So there is also artist ambition, you know, to be in such a good show, and we have to accept it. Why not, you know? Also, I probably think that some artists in the gender track also accept it because they understood it's a museum project. It is, it is held in a good place and so on. So this, the meaning we try to read in this work, it's not there forever. This is, I think, what is about our profession as such, you know, as art historian, I think all three of us would like to have the last word, you know, what Egle wanted to do in this, but we can't. Because they are also colleagues of our generation, and they are colleagues from younger generation who have another reading. But you know the, the the good thing about reading is that with time they are incorporated in the work, you know. So somehow we cannot I mean I'm sad to say we cannot be fixed on one meaning. And this is the challenge of our profession. Okay, I'm too professorial now, so I apologize. But you, you, you meet this in your everyday practice with artists, you know, some. And also what is for me, what was important for me about this, okay, let's say finally it, it's my reading. When I installed this chapter, uh, love, relationship, etc. There were a couple of poly, one Polish artist who, who, who made a male and female nudes embracing, you know, and when she saw her work in this context, she said, thank you, I never thought of it in this way, you know, that it can be framed, you know, only I try not to be aggressive with this, but you cannot... You cannot sometimes stress because as a curator, you know, you have the power to do certain things. You are paid to have a certain power. And I had too much power if I if you consult Marina Gershinich review of the gender track. But you know, in contrast to professors who teach at art academies, curators' power is limited, you know. It's my power ends with certain time, and if I'm lucky, and I must say, I was lucky with gender check because we had two publications, you know. What is, uh, what I didn't manage to do, and I'm still sorry about that, 
it was huge exhibition, but some people commented, we don't understand the context, you know, of these works. So another point is, if we do with our national art history, how do we explain context? But context is not fixed things. Artists also, with their work, they create, they contribute to the context. So exhibition was a temporary context. And Anna Dautikova was, uh, it, it, during one discussions, one discussion in Vienna, she said, in this exhibition, I feel, I feel properly conceptualized. And I was grateful to her, you know. It's temporary platform, all these exhibitions. Okay, it's... Thank you, Boyana. Uh, I think it's important to reflect on curatorial power. And uh, I will ask uh, Katrin and for our um, uh, viewers, I would show the uh, her catalogs. Uh, Katrin uh, created, uh, co-created this exhibition about women, Soviet women in Estonian art. And also she published a very important, which is a source book for cur curatorial studies and contemporary art in, in our region uh, about uh, working with feminism, uh, curating an exhibition in Eastern Europe. And uh, Katrin, could you please tell uh, about your experience in gender check as a researcher and also about uh, those uh, other projects which you worked as feminist curator and um, academic? Thank you, Laima. I will try to be concise and brief so that we would have more time for presentation. But I also would like to show some slides so that I wouldn't be just talking. And so this is my presentation. Can you see it? Can you see it? Yep. OK, good. Um, well, I'll just be brief. So I was one of the um, 24 local researchers, and I'm sorry to show you my own image together with the artworks, um, but I thought I'm, you know, old enough to, to allow myself such vanity. But um, so, so I was actually looking at, um, at uh, Estonian art starting from uh, late 1960s and the original project, I mean, th because gender check, the preparatory phase was very long and it also evolved. So um, originally uh, we proposed uh, much fewer uh, works of art and actually uh, the original concept, if I'm correct, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, was was a bit shorter and and uh, was to in, to to include uh, mostly late Soviet and and early post socialist um, uh, period. So in my research, um, I concentrated first of all on the late 1960s and 70s local non-conformist art and its gender representation. And actually, Boyan already showed you this. Um, um, pair of self-portraits which were made by, at the time, they were a married couple, uh, Leonhard Lapin and Sirja Runge. But what was really interesting about those, um, uh, those two um, self-portraits is that they were also very early examples of a postmodernist uh, approach to, to use classical imagery uh, and to uh, classical classical works of art and to restage them as a self-portrait. So, uh, Sirja Runga, who was the, the female uh, par uh, partner in the marriage, she actually made first, and that was also significant, she made the first self-portrait as a Venus, which, which as we can recognize, is a, uh, is, uh, is a reenactment of Velasquez, Rockaby Venus. And then uh, a couple of years later, Leonhard Lapin sort of produced his reply, which, which is a Giorgione um, uh, image in which he presented himself. And, and why, you know, was it interesting um, to look at these 
different types of, or not sort of uh, very uh, official types of images of self-representation and, and in terms of how one's gender in self-representation was evoked, was, was really to try to, to find um, those works of art which would illustrate the not the official understanding of Soviet type of gender equality and also how the roles, the gender roles were distributed in the society, which is the kind of part which also Boyana uh, showed uh, through her yeah. images, the official, sorry? Yeah, Katrin, could you please also do this uh, um, full screen for your presentation? I'm so, I'm so sorry. sorry. Yes, thank you. Well, thank you for reminding me, of course. That's better. Um, so, anyway, so so basically, yes, My one of the things which I try to look as as to look at this dialectic of official and semi or non-official art. So what was what was happening both outside and also inside the official art culture, and and uh, uh, I was trying to uh, find and I did find also some unrecognized proto-feminist works, which such as. Uh, for instance, by sculptor Anu Budar, who at the time was exhibited. I mean, she she was known and and she was exhibited, and her work already had been included in some feminist exhibitions. However, um, only after gender check, you know, because there was a big exhibition of her work in Kumu Art Museum in 2016, and and it's interesting that in 2020 she became the first Estonian artist who was purchased for the collection of Tate Museum. So, and at the time when, you know, her work and and her work is seen here, also Boyana showed it, um, is was was quite sort of unrecognized and, and also considered in the in the discourse of Estonian sculpture quite sort of insignificant. So she was doing the work which was really ahead of her own time. And I'm just just showing you the uh, some examples of the images, which was the first very short um, list of historical images which I proposed. But um, more, uh, it was much more easy, of course, to uh, to work with with the section which was uh, called at the exhibition post-communist genderscapes. And uh, because also, like many other state socialists in, in many other post-state socialist cultures, it was the 1990s where um, contemporary art started to engage with radically different representations of gender. And also in Estonia, we can date the emergence of feminist art back to sort of first part of the 1990s, the first seminars, uh, exhibitions took place in 1994-1995 and uh, Mora Dralla was, was certainly um, one of the uh, very um, charismatic and significant figures in, in um, starting the movement in Estonia and I'm not showing her work but but her work was shown in Boyana's presentation um, uh, video installations from 1995 this is how we this is how we gave birth to Estonian feminism and and as Boyana mentioned that was a big one of the biggest hits on on uh, in Warsaw exhibition um, what was also uh, typical of the 1990s was the emergence of transgressive body vulnerable masculinities which is uh, presented here by um, a series of uh, self-images by Mark Kreutberger. Again, the same work was also shown by Boyana. And, and also the first artistic images of homosexuality appeared in, in uh, art only in late 80s, early 1990s, so it was fairly late. Um, in terms of um, um, already the, the sort of so the volume 
of the material for starting from the 1990s onwards, of course, was was um, much more massive than the the actually. Um, because from from historical art, just going back here, uh, since I was trying to find so-called proto-feminist tendencies or latent feminists, I was also trying to find non-conformist sort of different types of of gendered representations, and and also what interested me was the innovative role of women artists in avant-garde or sort of neo-avant-garde art, which, which in Estonian case came to the fore in, in the art by uh, women graphic artists. So in that case, you know, I was, I was trying to, to find not all the works were, not that they were unknown, but they hadn't been the sort of... It, you know, perhaps the most well-known and well-represented and well-researched works uh, in Estonian art history uh, previously, uh, or, you know, they were not also not so well-known perhaps to the general audiences. Uh, what is interesting that now, 12 years later, the work by Siria Runga, which was presented to a gender check, uh, works by Mario Mutsu, Anu Budar, they all have become really well researched, uh, exhibited, represented. So, so obviously there is, I'm not saying that, you know, that, that there is kind of, that is necessarily to do with, with my research for gender check, but, but certainly, um, the general interest in in feminist art history and and feminist curating has has created this very fruitful platform for uh, researching and exhibiting and promoting the work of not just contemporary women artists but also the historical women artists. Yes, so that was that was basically. You know, I was trying to be very concise in terms of um, what was the kind of research, what were the main tendencies I uh, was following in my in my in my present or sort of collection, which I collection of works which I presented for gender check. And also the, the last example from early 21st century is a very interesting women's group um, who is um, uh, called Valley Export Society. And as the name implies, uh, what they do in their art or have done in their art is to um, reenact classical uh, chrestomatic uh, historical works of art by international feminist artists and and they mostly have been uh, doing their performance uh, works which they have reenacted in new um, situation and and in uh, in contemporary uh, Eastern European context which has given those those uh, well-known uh, works of art by by uh, Western feminist artists, a very different and and uh, interpretation, and they also have been highly politicized. So I also want to show a neighboring artist, uh, not just, you know, I even so I wasn't researching a Latvian artist, I was only working with an Estonian archive, but, but um, um, I chose this image by Latvian photographer and artist Zenta Zivitzinska to illustrate the fact what were the outcomes of gender check research. Um, because they obviously had a lot of uh, outcomes and a lot of impact also to national art histories. So after they've been sort of presented or first of all found often, you know, from the oblivion um, and, and being presented in this temporary platform in Vienna and Warsaw and they've been sort of shown to the, to the uh, Central European and, and generally European audiences, uh, they were rediscovered 
thanks to that exhibition, all discovered locally. And Zenta Zivizinska's archive, again, she was a very interesting woman photographer uh, in the 1960s, 70s, Latvia, and totally sort of unacknowledged, her work wasn't researched, and by now there is a whole archive which has been presented. And, and so in that sense, this generation of new archives and new knowledges has been very important, not just for the international sort of transnational audiences, but also for local art history. So so the kind of local art histories were able to, to be rewritten in many aspects thanks to the, uh, this sort of, yeah, thanks to this international and transnational networking which happened as, as part of, of gender check. And, and I also wanted to, to say that those publications and, and the conferences, uh, the whole, you know, with all the side events which sided with the exhibition itself, they certainly created a manifestation of a feminist art discourse and curatorial thinking. It wasn't like something, you know, it, it really, it was a really important statement which took place in very different forms over several years. And, and of course, it, it, uh, it generated further discussions and projects and research. So, I mean, it, it, and this is something which I will now briefly talk about. So um, one of the uh, exhibitions which, uh, which I co-curated um, locally in Estonia and which, which had both, it, it, it relied actually on one chapter from my PhD, but it certainly was engaging theoretically with the same um, um, philosophical and, and discursive uh, tools which were used also, which Boyana also used to frame the concept of gender check. And, uh, and that was the um, art, uh, sorry, the exhibition, The Soviet Woman in Estonian Art. Lima very kindly showed you already the, the catalogue. It took place in Gumu Art Museum in Tallinn, which is, which is uh, Gumu Art Museum is the main uh, national slash contemporary art museum in in Estonia, and uh, the exhibition's time frame were twenty years. So, in terms of of um, stylistic developments over those twenty years, we we looked at both the the classical examples of Soviet socialist realists, but also the the emergence of socialist modernism, the so-called severe or harsh style, which became became very popular in the nineteen sixties, and um, and our emphasis was actually on Estonian artists. I mean, they were not all ethnically Estonian, but they were artists living and working in Estonia and from Estonia. So actually, when we worked with archives, we, we made a conscious decision to not to include the artists um, from, let's say, neighboring St. Petersburg at the time, um, in the Soviet time, Leningrad, which just have, has, had happened to end up in Estonian collections. But we were really interested in, in how those artists who lived in Estonia, worked in Estonia, in which way they adopted or didn't adopt perhaps or sort of you know in some cases the requirements of the of the post-soviet occupation um, style socialist realism and its iconography so so it was it was really the kind of iconographic study of the new soviet woman and uh, in the cover of the catalogue, uh, we you can see um, a song of protest by Valerian Loy. Um, the exhibition included several different genres, sort of mostly reflecting the official requirements uh, and and the sort of iconography of socialist realists predominantly. So the official portraits, representation of class identity, images of work and study, 
one area or sort of three areas which were kind of less ideological were cultural activities and cultural figures. Also, the images of the so, so well, the sort of Soviet, but yet Estonian, with an emphasis with the work Estonian domestic milieu, and also the the representations and the images of of folk culture, which obviously was very um, productively used by Soviet propaganda. But again, what was interesting to look at whether some artists tried to somehow perhaps subvert by using this uh, folk culture um, and folk images to to perhaps not to engage or not to follow the, the strict rules of the official ideology. And I'm just showing you a couple of um, views. Uh, from the exhibition, uh, he, yeah, so we included, the, in terms of genres, we, we included, you know, painting, sculptor, graphic art, but we also had newsreels and some documentaries. So that was one of the projects which, which indeed was partially, at least from, from my point of view was very much uh, or you know partially informed by by those debates which which were um, articulated uh, during gender check project uh, the second uh, big uh, network actually uh, was um, an international network to which I was uh, invited as an Eastern European representative and um, and I'm coming back to this, but but actually the network was uh, called Transnational Perspectives on Women's Art, Feminism and Curating, and it also took place, as you can see, more or less the same time frame, 2010-12, and um, and this was a UK-funded enterprise, and the Leverhulme Trust was the main. Um, uh, funding body but you can see that that it basically Estonian Art Academy or Tallinn in, in, or myself we were the Eastern European partner but otherwise it was it it was led by Brighton University um, in UK and it also included people from Tate Smithsonian Institute and and um, uh, from from University of Edinburgh and also Concordia University in Montreal in Canada. So. Um, as part of that network in 2011. I organized a conference, Common Differences, Issues for Feminist Curating in both Socialist U Europe. And also, you know, I obviously using my old, well, not so old at that time, network of fa familial network of gender check, I invited Boyana as, as um, a one of the one of the keynote speakers and and also Laima was was um, invited to present and also some other colleagues from uh, from gender check but i must say that common differences in terms of it you know in terms of its geographical focusing it it concentrated more on uh, the countries, on the region of uh, around the Baltics, and I don't mean just the Baltic states, but I mean also the you know we had we had uh, uh, two presentations from Poland. We also had a representative, well, who had been actually originally from from um, uh, Slovenia, but she she lived now in Germany. But so in that sense, we were kind of you know more interested, not. To, to discuss the issues of feminist curating and, and you know, what would be the conditions really to, um, for feminist, for new types of feminist curating to emerge, uh, we, were, we were concentrating more in the kind of northern areas of the eastern and central Europe. And um, I also wanted to to think in in this terms of gender check as a generative site, and I and I, I 
uh, borrowed that uh, quote actually from Canadian um, uh, feminist writer René Baert, who um, wrote that um, that an exhibition exists not only in its manifest content as a presentation of a body of artworks or cultural objects, but as a generative site, as something through which a broader, of, broader of, often un, unanticipated debates and activities can arise. And, and to me, Gender Check certainly was such a generative site because it, it um, generated many new events, many new smaller networks, conferences, um, also publications, sort of, you know, the kind of, you could say, the post-production was going on very actively locally and in smaller regional areas for, for several, several years, actually, after the uh, event itself. Now, from this uh, conference, Common Differences, um, the um, selected number of, of papers were, were developed into longer chapters and, and um, I edited and, and we published the book Working with Feminists, Curating and Exhibitions in Eastern Europe. And, um, and basically most of those uh, chapters are case studies, but there is also the, uh, a, a philosophical and conceptual contribution from Angela Dimitrakaki from um, University of Edinburgh. Uh, but, but all those different case studies, which range, which mostly are from the Baltic states and two case studies from Poland, but also the uh, Macedonian writer is, is represented. And, um, and we tried to, to ask the question, what have been those common differences, which despite our very different national cultures, you know, and even despite this differences in political and social development have you know what what have been those common understandings the common platform on the common understanding um in terms of you know the, the the how how do we do feminist curating in the region so this this has been the kind of uh, one of the one of the aims of this book and I just wanted to say that if anybody, if anybody is interested in purchasing it, it's very cheap, and you can order it from Tallinn, uh, Tallinn University Publishing House. Um, okay. Uh, also, in this book was um, republished an interview with Boyana Page, made by Hungarian. Uh, art historian Hedvig Turai, and uh, and in that was um, the anger that entitled the uh, the anger of Werner Page, which which uh, gives a very good sort of um, background to um, to making or the, also the the impulses and the the conditions uh, from where the idea to create gender check um, uh, came. And the, this is my last image. And the last, my own contribution to some kind of, you know, post, uh, post uh, gender check production was my interview with Boyana Page, uh, which was now sort of, the interview was, was made already sometime, it was in, originally made in 2011, so it kind of looked back. The gender check exhibition had already taken place in two places. All of the of the events had taken place, and and this um, this interview, um, which I'm so glad I could have that conversation with Boyana because I thought it was a very illuminating interview into her 
uh, curatorial thinking and and she also responded already to criticism and so it, it, it really also for myself it was it was again working with it was it was it was part of that long process of how to work for years on one exhibition and I thought that was just brilliant, and and that one was included in um, in the book Politics in a Glass Case, published by Liverpool University Press in 2013, and that was also the book which was one of the research results of that transnational um, network, which uh, led by by UK, which I which I mentioned, and for those who would be interested in that interview, I also have. Uh, being allowed to share it on my academia edu uh, platform or website so so everybody uh, will be able to to find it there um, so basically i think that should be enough from me and i just now would like to hand it over to lima who will also present some more events and exhibitions um, which uh, took their cue or inspiration from gender check. And thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, yeah, I will just stop sharing just a second. Oops, sorry. Yeah. Thank you, Katrin. It's, uh, it's always interesting to listen to you and especially in relationship to feminist uh, art practices and creating and uh, in your research. Um, yeah, I think uh, in the Baltics you are one of the most or perhaps the most uh, uh, important uh, researcher in terms of, um, of gender lens, uh, looking through gender lens and definitely one of the first um, uh, and now I see we don't have that much time so I would just so try sorry, did I talk too long no, it's not your fault it's not your fault uh, but I would like to show just uh, some images maybe not stopping very much at them but um, uh, and then uh, I hope we still have some some brief notes to share to, to so I will just go to um, my slides uh, talking maybe more about the square aspect so let us see mm -hmm. do you see it Okay, uh, let uh, let me try to to um, so um, I will just um, say briefly that uh, when Boyana asked me to join the team, I was very honored and uh, really happy and. Um, one of the most important things I wanted to do is really to touch upon queer issues which were not talked about before, uh, or at least openly, and to show certain works which were important in Lithuania and they even caused scandals, but uh, uh, but uh, somehow they they were left on the margins. So uh, as you see, there is um, this series of works by Ugnus Gelguda living together contemporary traditional and non-traditional family and interesting thing that uh, he did this series but um, but uh, he couldn't find people like gay people in Lithuania who would agree to pose for 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 this project so we can see those Latvians uh, who agreed to be in, in his project. So by this, we also include Latvia and uh, sending greetings to uh, Mara Traumane, beautiful, beautiful, uh, very smart uh, uh, researcher, very good friend and like assistant to Boyana Page. And so I will just show that uh, this research uh, um, by Ugnus Gelguda, uh, which was um, uh, ordered by um, Lithuanian Gaelic, 
and uh, also consisted uh, some small descriptions of of the stories and uh, i think it was important just to, to show uh, those images in the broader context of um, european art and also legitimize uh, this queer world view um, also uh, Virgilius Shonta was a photographer of Soviet times. He was a homosexual man, but uh, uh, at that time many people knew, but it was still not official information. And for me, it was also important to to show him in, in this gender check context, to, to show um, uh, this uh, homoerotic gaze, uh, this uh, really visual pleasure in terms of a man looking at a man, um, and representing a male nude. Uh, so Virgilio Shonta, who died uh, a tragic death and uh, with unknown circumstances, it was uh, also important tribute to his memory. And uh, Shonta himself said that uh, um, uh, only when you look uh, to, uh, at the world with the eyes of a stranger, you can really see it uh, clearly. So it's... Um, it's interesting, and here it's his self-portrait uh, presenting himself uh, both with hairs and 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 um, and without. Uh, also, uh, Violetta Bubelite, uh, Boyana showed her uh, important uh, artist who continues her, I would say, lifelong performance uh, at photographing herself as female nude and the uh, looking from different perspective, uh, really uh, not from this erotic gaze of this erotic male gaze, but really uh, taking uh, this power of uh, showing uh, female nude, showing herself as she sees it and like really emphasizing different things. Here are some images from another project which uh, uh, we curated together with Benedetta Carpi de Resmini, which was called Magma. Mm, uh, here it is the catalog of, of it and um, then uh, what was immediate impact of gender check is uh, that uh, uh, the researchers of the region as Katrin said they, they felt like they were strong and they had this discursive community this uh, solidarity of researchers and uh, to put this gender question not somewhere in the margin but in the center to, to have the scope of, uh, to look uh, at culture and art through this gender lens and uh, Elona Lubite, curator of, uh, of the National Gallery she invited me to create together this women's time sculpture and film from the collection of uh, Lithuanian Art Museum. So uh, I will just go very, very fast through those slides. Uh, what, to, what we try to do is really to deconstruct this uh, uh, idea of women and also, for example, family, because we have this uh, 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 idea that it's traditional family, but it, Indeed, it is uh, um, uh, simply uh, different kinds of bonds. And if you look closer, it's more like women, uh, um, mother and grandmother, not that much those um, families. And here are just the structure, how we divided uh, uh, the exhibition. But I, I'm not going uh, uh, to, to talk um, about these works, just show images, because I, I would really like to, to discuss with uh, my colleagues about um, still the importance of, of gender check and um, how we feel it now, what is the difference from, from, the, uh, from 2010 uh, and, and nowadays. Uh, um, yeah, it's just like um, different approach towards birth, like uh, female author, sculptor, and then male author, uh, male artist, how he sees like uh, women, just the body, like some kind of container for future de generations. Yeah, and... Um, so uh, for those who are interested, of course, uh, uh, there is this catalog, uh, there is this also PDF file, uh, 
and uh, I think uh, I'm almost done with uh, with that, um, and so we can, uh, um, yes. Uh, so now uh, we can uh, basically um, go back to to the discussion. Uh, I will try to, yeah. Um, For some reason, I cannot. Uh, okay, I will just stop sharing the, the file, um, and uh, I would like to to go back to my colleagues uh, and to continue discussion. Uh, Boyana, uh, <laughs> thank you that you you still here. Uh, it took longer than we uh, expected. Uh, uh, but let's let's talk about gender check, about this renewed interest, and uh, how do you think about this exhibition uh, from this 12-year perspective? Do you think uh, certain questions are still important, and what would you do, would have done differently if it were like nowadays, if it, you were about to start such an exhibition? Okay. Uh, I mentioned earlier power of the curator. And I was not able to implant my power in the catalogue because my intention for the catalogue was that all interviews with researchers, which was the starting point of the gender check, should be published the first thing in the catalogue. And all these interviews that Mara Traumane, our colleague, for the moment in Riga, uh, did with all of you. But according to this museum idiotic structure, you who initiated all this story had to be at the end of the catalog. And this is where I felt. The thing is, I don't believe it would be, first of all, if a new gender check happens, I'm not in it, you know. It's now time for your generation to do certain things. But this interest, uh, I have one explanation. I don't know if you if you agree with it. You know the <coughs> in two thousand seven, feminist art history. I, I exaggerate probably, but maybe I should do. Feminist discourse was introduced in post-Soviet or post-communist Europe as curatorial project. It was not part of academia at that time, still, you know. But now, 20, 20 12 years after, I have a feeling that feminist thinking or feminist methodology entered academias, you know, entered entered uh, academias in the sense, uh, let's say, standard art history. Do you agree with this? There is more journals, more books than in the early 2000s. I would definitely agree, and I think uh, Kati will continue because I think uh, it's thanks to, to uh, such exhibitions as Gender Check and thanks to this uh, um, network of researchers, which also Gender Check helped to solidify, and uh, not only this network, but the broader network, which also spanned other uh, countries and uh, and uh, because uh, such research as, as Kati rooted in academia, <laughs> basically, I think uh, those researchers brought um, this feminism uh, perspective because it's, uh, it's about people. It's about who teaches, what courses, and uh, what theories. What do you think, um, Katrin? Uh, uh, yes, yes, of course, yes. But uh, I still... I mean, yes and no, because of course, compared to how marginal uh, any feminist ideas were still in the, let's say, late 90s or early 2000s, we are in a different 
moment now. I mean, obviously, uh, certain um, approaches in in uh, philosophical thinking, in art history, sociology especially, they have become very accepted and even you know, perhaps not necessarily a mainstream. But the problem with academia is always that there is always new ideas coming on. So that there is a, another danger that it is in some cases, you know, since there is, let's say, the, the um, new types of uh, art history, for instance, sort of materialist art history, or now it's it's working with the environment and art history, that those new ideas tend to kind of push feminism in the background. And, and, and I notice sometimes that some sometimes some, you know, it's not necessarily, yeah, that, that sometimes maybe some students even say, oh, but, you know, feminism is so passé. I mean, it's kind of, it happened already, you know, it, it already happened as a, let's say, as a, as an intellectual project. Do you know what I mean? But, so, so there is both, I see both tendencies, but at the same time, what has changed? The societies have changed. It's absolutely, I mean, I look at the younger generation and their understanding of gender equality, of the social equality and the social activism is completely different. I mean, they have been brought up in free westernized countries their mental landscape is transnational it's international and i think this is one of the of the platforms and of course our societies have become also as part of the european union they have become more aligned with the sort of general gender mainstreaming ideologies which they were not 20 years ago. So this has made a huge shift. I, I, I wouldn't say, yes, okay, maybe now feminism as an activist has become even more radical, but certain ideas, I mean, ideas about women's rights and children's rights and the equal pay, they have become a mainstream ideas, at least in Estonian society, I can say. And that has you know, that also makes younger generations so much more understanding towards, you know, kind of both understanding that, yes, this is normal, but at the same time, the danger is that, oh, but this is already something we have achieved. But I can say, at least amongst my students, there is a huge interest in, in, um, in feminist, uh, it both sort of like, art history and and curatorial work as well. So so I think it's it's the it, it you right. I mean it is the moment. It is the moment which you know I just showed you this before and I'm gonna show this also to our audiences. This is the result this is not a catalogue, this is actually also a, a book which has chapters in it. That was a first large-scale mainstream museum exhibition uh, only working with women artists in Estonia. And that happened last year, 2020. So it took a long time, even within the museum, to come you know, the whole year 2020 for uh, Museum of Estonian Art was dedicated to women artists. But it's taken, what, 25 years? You know, the feminist art movement locally started in early 90s. So it's taken 20 years. But yes, in certain ways, in certain formats, it's now much more accepted than it was when when even even when we were working on gender check that's at least my experience i don't know maybe why may you would like to uh, for me uh, i have a feeling that uh, yes in a way it became mainstream but uh, on the other hand it's never mainstream when we still live in patriarchy 
so we, we we think that it's uh, it's more accepted but if you go deeper you would find the same structures and then it's just like sometimes it feels like we are just scratching the surface still because uh, never mind the european regulations and like really uh, like we now have, for example, in Lithuania and Vilnius Art Academy, a female rector and very uh, po positive thinking in the academy, really encouraging uh, e equal opportunities. But uh, sometimes if you go to structures, it's this, this like old fashioned, like uh, uh, male dominated, this modernist discourse of power and it's, you just can't change that in 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 uh, even in 25 years so um so i think uh, uh, what was important and what is important uh, is really that network and that uh, kind of uh, power of uh, of having each other's back and really supporting uh, researchers and supporting um, exhibitions and really encouraging each other and for that, I'm I'm really thankful for Bo for Boyana, and I'm giving this as example of feminist curating. It's that it's horizontal, but it's also um, really empowering and encouraging, and it's a really kind of network network of uh, it's always network working with the others. So uh, Boyana. You are like our godmother, I <laughs> I must say. I think uh, gender check, uh, now that we are coming to the end of the discussion, maybe we can relieve finally that it's some kind of mafia. And I hope that uh, this mafia family will continue. It's a uh, it's, uh, horrible and wonderful deeds. Uh, Boyana, what, what could you say for summarizing our, our discussions and talks? Um, can I First just say all, one more thing before? Thank you. So oh, yeah. Can I just say one thing? I think there is also uh, the international situation, which has obviously, you know, with all the Me Too movements and just the sort of which which generates the interest in big projects such as you know regenerate to look back at this. That was something I wanted to add. Yeah. Sorry. No, please. Thank you so much for what you said until now. I really feel like no. I I feel touched. Okay. Now let's let's get emotional. Concerning patriarchy and so on, since I live in Berlin, and you know that uh, Frau Angela Merkel was sixteen years a German Chancellor. And there were, you know, local satirists, they say that young kids are asking mama, mama, can a man be a chancellor, for example? And now, Christian Democratic Party, her party, is now trying to get a new president, a leader of the party. And in Christian Democratic Party, there are hardly any women. So one of the men who applied, who will apply to get a, pres a leadership of the party said, but we should now give the men a chance. You know, so... <laughs> Concerning patriarchy and so on, thank you so much. I really feel touched by both of you. But this is... Can I say something very pathetic? Feminist solidarity, is it? Um, I'm so glad we of course can talk for ages uh, this uh, uh, wonderful yeah. gender check mafia family reunion but uh, I hope that our talks were much more than that uh, not just some personal stories uh, so I'm really uh, happy for Kona's um, artist house uh, that they were interested in, in gender check exhibition that they open it uh, again for maybe new generation of uh, artists, curators uh, those who are interested in, in contemporary art and gender issues and of course most of all um, I'm happy and I'm grateful to wonderful curators, researchers Boyana Page who was the chief curator of, of gender check uh, and also after the wall and and Katrin Kivima, who was researcher from Estonia, who is also a curator and researcher uh, of her own. 
thank you for uh, sharing uh, your thoughts and experiences and i hope that we will continue and uh, the uh, younger artists researchers curators will join us or they form their new networks and we would be happy to contribute in any shape form or whatever so thank you very much and thank you for those who listened to our discussion Let's continue. And thank you. Thank you for Kaunas for inviting us. Thank you very yeah, thank much. You, really. Thank you for Kaunas inviting us. And thank you, Lima, for wonderful, you know, show. So, uh, again, thank you to everybody, uh, Edwinas, Agne, Boyana, Katrin, and let's feminist revolution continue. Let's, let's do it. See you. Penseremos. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.